you may have heard it said, Jesus is not coming anytime soon. Maybe he will come one day if he exists, but not in our lifetime. Or every generation has been saying Jesus is coming and he still hasn't come yet. Life will continue on as usual. If you have experienced and are still experiencing what I am going through every day, that is usually the response you will get when talking to people about the Lord's imminent return to rapture his church. However, our confidence in the time should not be shaken by the world's dismissal. Even the scoffer's very own words prove that the Lord's return is near. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3-4, to 4, we read the following. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Why am I so confident that Jesus is coming soon? Why am I so sure that this is the generation that's going to witness the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? To understand this more clearly, you have to understand God's prophetic timepiece, the nation of Israel. In Matthew chapter 24, when Jesus' disciples asked him what the signs of the end would be, Jesus then gives them a description of the things that would precede his second coming, which is at the end of the seven-year tribulation period. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 to 8, we read the following. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. One could argue that there has always been earthquakes, wars, famines, pestilences, etc. That would be true. But I think when you see how these things are increasing in intensity and frequency, just like a woman in travail that's about to give birth, you will see we are not living in normal times. But more importantly, many are still missing the key. They are missing the key that unlocked the final countdown. Again, that key is the nation of Israel. Israel officially became a nation on May 14th, 1948. This was a huge event that, although many do not realize, started a final countdown that will conclude with the second coming of Jesus Christ when he touches down on the Mount of Olives at the end of the seven-year tribulation period and establishes his 1,000-year millennial reign. 2,500 years before Israel officially became a nation, the prophet Isaiah prophesied that this event would occur and that it would occur in a single day. In Isaiah chapter 66, verse 8, the prophet Isaiah records the following. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. After Jesus explains to his disciples in Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 to 8, the things that would precede his second coming, he then gives them the key that unlocks the final countdown, and it's located in the same chapter, Matthew chapter 24, but further down in verses 32 to 34. Go there with me, Matthew chapter 24, verses 32 to 34. The Lord Jesus Christ says the following, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. This prophecy is known as the parable of the fig tree. Many students of the Bible and end times eschatology will agree that the fig tree is representative of the nation of Israel. 
In fact, when you look at the plant symbols of Israel, the olive tree is a symbol of Israel's religious privileges, the vine is a symbol of Israel's spiritual privileges, and the fig tree is a symbol of Israel's national privileges. Very clearly here, when you interpret this parable, Jesus is explaining when we see Israel officially become a nation, the generation that witnesses this will not pass away until all of these things be fulfilled. Until what things be fulfilled? Everything Jesus has said prior to this in Matthew chapter 24. So, the generation that witnesses Israel officially becoming a nation will not pass away until all of these things be fulfilled, including the seven-year tribulation period. A lot of people will say, well, Chad, you're talking about Matthew's account of the parable of the fig tree. But when you go to Luke's account of the parable of the fig tree, it doesn't just talk about the fig tree. It talks about all the other trees. So what does that mean? Well, first, let's read Luke's account of the parable of the fig tree. In Luke chapter 21, verses 29 to 33, we read the following. And he spake to them a parable. Behold, the fig tree and all the trees, when they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. If we know that the fig tree is representative of the nation of Israel, what are all the other trees Luke is referring to here? The other trees are referring to other nations. I want you to think about this. In 1946, just two years before Israel officially became a nation, there were 74 independent nations. In 1950, just two years after Israel officially became a nation, there were 89 independent nations. Today, there is currently 195 independent nations. So, since Israel officially became a nation on May 14th, 1948, there has been a massive uptick in independent nations. There's your fig tree referring to the nation of Israel and all the other trees referring to all the other nations. Now the big question is, how long is a generation? This has been something that many students of end times eschatology have debated on. However, I think we get a pretty good clue in the book of Psalms chapter 90 verse 10. So Psalms 90 is actually a Psalms of Moses. So when you go down to Psalms chapter 90 verse 10, we read the following. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. So very clearly here, Moses talks about a generation being 70 to 80 years. Now I've seen many students of end times eschatology present good cases for the length of a biblical generation. I've seen 40 years, 50 years, 70 to 80 years, 100 years, 120 years. However, I think Moses gives us a very big clue in the book of Psalms, chapter 90, verse 10. Because when you look around the world right now at the current lifespan of people all over, all over the world, it is generally between the 70 to the 80 year mark with the average lifespan of people closer to the 80 year mark. Some people live longer. You see people living over 100 now, but on average, you will see somewhere in the 70 to the 80 year mark, exactly as Moses said in the book of Psalms, chapter 90, verse 10. So if Israel officially became a nation on May 14th, 1948, and Jesus tells us in the parable of the fig tree that this generation that witnesses this will not pass away until all of these things are fulfilled, and we add 70 to 80 years, the length of a generation according to Psalms chapter 90, verse 10, it takes us to the years 2018 to 2028. Now, we must remember that there is a seven-year tribulation period that needs to be added in the preceding rapture of the church. 
That would take the tribulation starting in a window from the years 2011 to 2021. We are obviously past that time frame right now, as we are in December of 2023, as I am doing this video. We are not in the tribulation period yet, and the rapture of the church has not occurred yet. The whole point I am trying to make here is we are on the window right now. It has been over 75 years since Israel became a nation. So, if the tribulation were to start in the fall of 2024, for example, and I'm not saying it is, but if the tribulation period were to start in the fall of 2024 next year, Israel would be 83 years old at the end of the seven-year tribulation period in the year 2031. That takes you outside of the 70 to 80 year generational time frame mentioned by, by Moses in Psalms chapter 90, verse 10. However, we can understand that this is just a general time frame, not an exact one. And if the 70 to 80 year genera generational time frame, as outlined in Psalms chapter 90, verse 10, is accurate, we are in a window right now to expect the imminent return of Jesus Christ to rapture his church. Regardless of your view on if the 70 to 80 year generational time frame is accurate, here is the main point. Israel is God's prophetic timepiece, and the final countdown to Jesus' return began ticking once Israel officially became a nation on May 14th, 1948. When I look around right now at what's going on in the world, it reiterates to me that this generational time frame is correct. And all I can tell you, if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world right now at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You'll see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back one day, very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ in him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is a day of salvation. What do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. He was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you can never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places. You will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. Eternal torment, eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven and the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming and he's coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me and God bless you all.